Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we turn to talking about one of our favorite cartoon comedy shows from Fox called Family Guy. Family Guy is of course a very funny show that often touches on political issues at times. And even, they've been known to sort of be one of those cartoons that predicts the future sometimes. That's happened on The Simpsons Show and South Park, similar comedy shows and cartoons. And Family Guy has had similar situations. Sometimes they make a joke and people reference back to it many years later saying, hey, this actually happened in real life. And today we're going to talk about one of those instances in light of the current events going on in our country today, starting with a very bad incident happening in Minneapolis, leading to all these demonstrations going across the country, and even a very famous autonomous zone being created in Seattle, Washington. Well, Now, that brings us to today's Family Guy episode, because about 20 years ago, Family Guy had its own little autonomous zone as well. They had one episode where Peter makes his own little country in his plot of land at his house, and it's a very funny episode that, after re-watching it, I just went over the episode recently to prepare for this video, and actually, there's a lot of other relevant jokes in there, too. Despite the episode being two decades old, that's right, they reference a number of things, including both of the Clintons get a joke in there, and a couple of other funny things we're going to mention. We're going to go over this whole story, the premise, how things come to be, how Family Guy gets its own autonomous zone, and more soon. We're going to talk about how it relates to current events and all that stuff, but first, let's take a quick moment to check out our sponsor. As we've seen, there's been riots and chaos in the streets, and some places are forced to close and board up, and you can't get food in some parts of town. Well, we have a solution, and it's coming from preparewithnobs.com. My Patriot Supply has provided NoBS with an excellent option for some dry storage food. This food is really delicious, it's really affordable, and it can live on your shelf for many, many years. So you can always save it and have it in case of an emergency. And right now we've seen many emergencies happening and popping up across the country and throughout the world. So buying some long-term emergency storage food is really a must. And if you join today and check out the link, Prepare With No BS, well, you can also save $100 instantly. So go to preparewithnobs.com, save $100 today, and also support the show while you do it. Thanks for your time. Now, back to today's episode. Great, now that that's out of the way, let's get to this Family Guy episode. The episode is called E. Peterbus Unum, and it's also been known to be called Pretoria because that's what Peter calls his little self-contained country that he creates on his house and his land. And that's what's been referenced over and over again in light of these current events. People keep bringing up Pretoria and how this resembles the whole Chaz region, which is called Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle. They have a little couple blocks there that they've started their own country, and it's going just about as poorly as Peter's attempt did at Family Guy. Granted, they're very different situations. They actually have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. For example, the Autonomous Zone, of course, started in Seattle in response to a lot of protests, a lot of political strife, a lot of these demonstrations going wrong. And Peter gets to his place in a very different way, but it has similar bad results. It doesn't go well for either side here. So we're going to break it down and go over it beat by beat. So as I mentioned, the title is E. Peter Bis Unum. It's from season two, episode 18, all the way back in July 2000. So almost exactly 20 years old. Now we're coming up on July here in a few weeks. So this is 20 years old, but I have to say it holds up. It's still funny. The only things I think that are dated with this kind of cartoon and Family Guy is it's a little bit slower than the new stuff. The animation is a little more um, rough. It's not as clean cut and great as the new show gets over the years. So there's a few little slowdowns and a few little ticks here and there. Some of the references might seem dated, but if you're around my age, if you're a millennial or 30 or something and you watch this when it came out, it still holds up. So I remembered all the references of some younger people might miss them, but we'll get to that soon. First, let's start with the summary. It says, Peter learns that his neighbors have gotten a tax refund and spent it with gifts for themselves. Cleveland gets a trampoline, Quagmire gets a plug-in sex doll, and Joe a digital TV with surround sound. Peter, on the other hand, wants to purchase a swimming pool, but gets audited by the U.S. Internal Revenue Service and is denied a tax refund. His plans to build a backyard pool on his own are further derailed when he accidentally cuts a power line during construction and a man from the power company reveals that the town's zoning laws prohibit building a pool. 
When a request for a zoning permit leads to Mayor Adam West, he reveals that Peter's house is not even part of the United States. And here's the little map that he points out to when Peter meets the mayor. And that's where their house is, that little black spot right there. It's basically some kind of clerical error. It's some kind of like mistake that never got addressed, just kind of been looked over for years. Peter says he's been living in the house for 12 years in this moment. And it just goes to show, it's just kind of like a random instance that Peter goes and takes advantage of. So the next move is, and as this line says, it says, he declares himself a new microstate of Pretoria. And that's where um, we get to the part where it's opportunity meets, you know, kind of innovation, but also someone very dumb. Now we're starting to sound like that Chaz region, right? Like Chaz was all about having the opportunity to take advantage of another situation. So Chaz was kind of a similar thing where they seized the opportunity. They saw all this chaos going on in the world. They saw that people were fighting and there was a chance to kind of take advantage and create the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. And that's similar to what Peter does. Granted, his is more of like a clerical error that causes him to take advantage, but it's similar things. And it's similar also where we got to recognize that Family guy, you know, he's, we love him and he's hilarious, but he's also very dumb and very stubborn and not just like, not the brightest guy. And that's the point that we're trying to address and connect them with these protesters, these Antifa and BLM people in the Chaz region. Like they're not too bright either. Their stuff is falling apart. It's kind of like a half-baked idea that they went for. And now they're a little bit in over their heads. And that's what happens with Peter too. Now, before we get to many more, uh, commentary and talking about the story. There are a few jokes to mention here. Uh, for example, once they start the state, uh, immediately the news people come there and Lois has an interview with one of the no news ladies and she's like become the first lady. And they do this whole funny thing where she's the first lady and she's like talking about the positions that the rest of the family has. So here's Lois talking to Trisha Takanawa. And the couple of things that are funny here is, first of all, Lois Lane starts off saying she's like kind of like Hillary Clinton, but without the penis. Like she literally says that. And it's just that got me going. And that's when I kind of turn my head. I'm like, whoa, this is relevant in the present. You know, like we're all goofing on Hillary Clinton since 2016. Granted, she's kind of fallen out of favor now. She still tries to pop up and chime in. And some people even say she could be Joe Biden's vice president pick, which would be crazy. But go ahead. I mean, if they want to rematch Trump, I don't think they're going to like the results in in that case. But regardless, there's a Hillary Clinton reference in this scene. And they also reference, like, it's kind of a light reference to almost like, I want to say Space Force, because the other thing that Lois says to Trisha here was that, you know, she says that Stewie's in charge of something. And then she says that uh, the other son is in charge of the space program. And then that's where we see him kind of like trying to reach for the moon in a shot. I forget where it is. Oh, here it is. Here's him in charge of the space program. He was reaching for the moon and just fell down. And I just thought that was a funny coincidence because Trump just like restarted the space program. And they also just came out with a spoof series based on that called Space Force starring Steve Carell. So that's not too much in, in relation, but it is a funny joke. And then the next joke that comes up here is actually pretty relevant too. Back at the bar, Peter's talking to someone. And then here we see a Civil War joke where Peter faces off against Robert E. Lee. Now, this couldn't get more relevant than ever. I mean, this is something that's actually being talked about a lot right now because, like we said, all this strife going on, all this race baiting, and the Civil War has come back up. That's why they're tearing down old statues. A lot of Robert E. Lee statues have gone down, and a lot of people have kind of shamed and taken down things that have to do with the Civil War. Like this joke actually probably wouldn't be PC nowadays, especially considering how they're censoring anything referencing the Civil War. Gone with the Wind got taken down off HBO Max. And I think it's actually being put up back up now with like a warning message, which is kind of weird. And then another Civil War reference was that Lady Antebellum band that had to change their name because Antebellum references pre-Civil War. So this is interesting that it relates to this and it comes up in a similar Family Guy episode. And it's just crazy, the coincidences here. I can't believe how much this is relating to the present. Now, with that said, let's get back to the plot. It says here now, Peter declares his house the new microstate of Pretoria. He spends a night in Quahog insulting the bartender Horace and bringing beer out into the street, stepping on the grass that he can't be touched and violating numerous laws. So this is the part where Peter says he has diplomatic immunity. He also references uh, 
Lethal Weapon 2, that was like a premise in Lethal Weapon 2 because, you know, there's a premise in there where the guy's from another country. And if you're a diplomat, you can't like get arrested or pulled over as much. Now, granted, that's a little bit exaggerated in the movie and in the real world, like you could still get arrested for a crime. But so, yeah, they make this diplomatic immunity joke. It actually has a really funny musical number where Peter sings You Can't Touch This, which is a parody of this MC Hammer song, which was really funny. And it was a well done segment. Here's Peter singing, you can't touch this. He commits a bunch of crimes, tries to get away with it. This is MC Hammer right there. Pretty funny rendition, Family Guy version. Next, Peter goes into the government. He's trying to demand stuff, and he kind of like becomes a representative. This is like a little like United Nations-like group of other country leaders. He's trying to get himself, yeah, there's the UN cafeteria. He's trying to get himself in with these other countries now. And then what happens next is he gets recommendation from this guy who says to take what he wants. And then it leads to Peter annexing his neighbor's pool. Here he's in Joe's pool and he annexes it and takes it as part of Pretoria. But he finds out that that's actually a bad move because next is where we get another reference and another plot point. Because here we see Bill Clinton. This is Bill Clinton referenced in this episode. He was the president at the time. So that makes sense. And it's just funny because like I was saying before about the Hillary reference and other stuff going on here, like they would probably never make this joke. Like they never made these kinds of jokes about Obama. Clintons were goofed on pretty good back then, even by liberals, which is funny because nowadays things are so polarizing. I don't think they would ever do that. Like it would never happen again in the present. But the fact that Bill and Hillary get referenced here and goofed on was a really nice touch for me. I mean, I thought it was really relevant and funny that we're going back 20 years and it's still really interesting now. Now back to the story. As I mentioned, uh, after the advice from Iraq, Peter annexes Joe's pool and calls it Joe which is a great name. And this also makes them cause an Operation Desert Clam. That means that's what Bill Clinton was talking about. They're going to have to put a border around Pretoria now and the government and the U.S. Army is stepping in and kind of like taking over the whole place. And then it says days later, when Chris tries to go to school, he's turned away by because the United States military surrounds and blockades the nation of Pretoria with tanks and missiles. Further, all electricity and water has been cut, and Lewis homeschools the kids. Peter is forced into negotiating for repatriation after Lois and the children leave him to the U.S. under the threat of Operation Bomb the Crap Out of Your House. After some negotiations, Peter ends up repatriating his country and returning Joe's pool, Grateful to Peter, Lois promises to scratch his back with a matchbook every night. In the end, all the events of the episode turn out to have been filmed and used ever since in social studies classes 200 years in the future. Now, this is actually an interesting ending because I've actually referenced this when I talked about Chaz and the Autonomous Zone. So this is like another little coincidence and very interesting and relevant point because a few times when I talked about it, I was like saying how it would be funny how in the future there is going to be a little footnote where it's like, oh, this part of downtown Seattle was its own state for a couple days, a couple weeks now. I mean, it's probably been at least a week since then. And that's kind of the length that Peters goes on. It was like less than a week when they talk about it in the future scene. But yeah, it's it's so funny because I said the same thing about Chaz and now it's happening in this episode here's the future scene at the end you could see the futuristic people like talking about the story like oh this was Pretoria it's like a little footnote in a future history class and that's what's going to happen with Chaz it's going to be a small footnote even if it does last longer it's not going to last forever it's just this kind of goof kind of like with Peter it's not serious it's not really to be taken seriously and it's uh interesting that that family guy almost predicted this 20 years ago I think it's a good reference a good episode that's more relevant now than ever. Not even just that, but there's also a few other moments that we didn't get to specifically. Like the one I wanted to mention was here. Here you can see there's like a news show talking about the Pretoria situation. And they kind of like resemble like, a I don't know, a CNN or something from back in the day. And it's funny because they're, they have characters on both sides. Like from what I remember, this guy seemed to be like a conservative saying, we need to send in troops, we need to stop them, like lock it down, we shouldn't let this happen. And then this guy is kind of like the liberal kind of fine arts major who goes after it and is just like, no, they have a right to exist. You know, Pretoria has a right and they should have, you know, autonomy, blah, blah, blah. And it was just funny to me. It's like a really quick moment here and it ends with like this dumb uh, Brady Bunch joke where the Brady Bunch 
made comes in the middle because it kind of looks like the Brady Bunch squares. But the point is, they even goof on the media here and talk about how they're taking sides and how the bleeding heart liberals want to kind of support this kind of chaos and this kind of like secession from the state. And that's not the only reference either. There's actually one more I want to get to. Right here, it gets really good. We see Tom Tucker's at the scene, like he's embedded with the soldiers. He's even got the whole outfit on and he's reporting on things. And he kind of, the camera turns away and you think there's like these battle sounds going on, but then it cuts back to him making these fake noises with like a kazoo and this popping paper. You know, he's actually faking the news. And this part, it's not as dead on, but it actually is very relevant. Like fake news is a big problem in the present. They try to hype up these problems in different ways. I mean, the angles are different now because CNN actually is kind of trying to play down the danger in the Chaz Autonomous Zone, as are a lot of other liberal outlets. But this thing reminds me of another situation that's happened with fake news and these bad reporters. And we've seen them kind of getting proven to be making stuff up in these war zones. This happened during Iraq and Afghanistan the last decade or so. There was one reporter who actually lied about being in a helicopter that got shot at, and it turned out he wasn't really shot at. And there was a whole story with that. But the point is, that's another thing they predicted. And this is another reference to just bad journalism and how no one trusted the media too much back in the day. It's just gotten way worse and out of hand. And I think it's worth noting. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed this new Family Guy Explained episode. And also, I hope you noticed all the references and how it's still relevant, even though it's 20 years old. Comment your thoughts on everything below. And also, make sure you hit that like button to get us shared. And until next time, you guys have a great day.